Instead of using the protractor and ruler method, we're going to rather use the component method. So remember guys, what that means is we need to take each of these four forces and break them up into lefts and rights and ups and downs. So I'm going to start with, and it doesn't really matter which, actually I'm going to start with the 40. It's super easy. I'll show you why. If you look at that 40 Newton, it is not going up or down. It's only going to the left. So literally, all we are going to say for that one is 40 Newtons to the left. So there's the answer for that one. So I'm actually just going to summarize it over here. So the 40 Newton was only 40 Newtons to the left. Complete. Now we can do the 60 Newton. So the 60 Newton you can see is just going down. So we can just say 60 Newton. By the way, when I do these things with the line over here, some students in the past, they used to think I was dividing. Guys, what I'm doing is I'm making a little heading. I'm saying, I'm saying this is the 40 Newton one, there's a little heading, and there's the 60 Newton one, and that's a heading, just so we know which one we're dealing with. And so this one is only going to be 60 Newtons down. So that's now complete. The next one I'm going to do is this 25 Newton. So this one's a bit more interesting because obviously it's going at an angle, which means that if I draw a triangle like that, and if I just enlarge that triangle slightly over here, and the 25 is here, then we should realize that this arrow over here is going to push a little bit right and a little bit up. So we need to go find those components now. So I'm going to put an X and a Y over here. And now we use trigonometry. So that's Sokotoa. And so for example, if we look at the 30 degrees and we look at the X, that's the adjacent. And we have the hypotenuse. So that would be cos. So what you would say is cos 30 is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse, like that. And then you could get X alone by multiplying the 25 across. So it'll become 25 cos 30. And so X would be equal to 21 0.65 newtons. Now this arrow is going more to the right. So I'm going to say right. Now we can do the, the y. So what you could do there is you could realize that y is the opposite and this is the hypotenuse. So that is sin. So we can say sin 30 equals to the opposite over the hypotenuse like that. And then we can get y alone by multiplying the 25 up. And so we'll find that y is equal to 25 sin 30, which is equal to 12.5 newtons. And if you look at this arrow, it's going more up. So we can say up. And so I've summarized the information for the 25 newton over here. The last one is the 35 Newton. So I'm just going to draw a little triangle. That triangle would look like that. So I'm going to just redraw it. And so the 35 is the hypotenuse and the 20 degrees is over there. And we need to find X and Y. So it's going to pretty much be the same thing. We're going to realize that cos is going to be used for the X component. And then if you multiply the 35 across, you would find that X is equal to 32.89 if you're doing two decimals and that's going to be newtons and if you look at this arrow now guys here's where you've got to be a bit more careful this arrow would go more to the left so we're not going to say to the right we're going to say left and then we're going to do the vertical component which would end up being sin because that's opposite over hypotenuse so you could say sin 20 equals to the opposite over the hypotenuse, which is 35. Multiply the 35 across, and we would find that y is going to be 11.97 newtons up. And so there we have now taken all four of the forces and we've summarized them. So now what we need to do is we need to work out the total left and right and the total up and down. So I'm going to start with the left and the right, which I'm going to call x. And I'm going to choose the right as positive. Why? Just because I feel like it. So what we'll see is that if I start from left to right, or if I start over here, the le this first one is left. So I'll start off with negative 40. Why negative? Because I chose right as positive, but this one is going to the left. Then the next one is 21.65, which is positive. 
and then this one is going to the left, so that'll be a minus again. And so calculating this, we'll find that the answer is 51.24, but it's negative. Now, does that mean we've made a mistake? Not at all. It means that we chose going to the right as positive, but we got a negative answer. So what that means is that fx is actually going to be 51.24 newtons left. Notice we do not have to go and recalculate. Now we're going to do the y's. So we're going to say fy, and I'm going to choose upwards as positive. And so that's going to be negative 60 for this one, negative 60. And then this is up, which is 12.5. And then this is up, which is 11.97. And calculating this gives us negative 35.53 newtons. Now, once again, that's a negative answer. So all that it means is that, therefore, the y component is going to be 35.53 newtons, but we're going to rather say down because we chose up as positive, but we're getting a negative answer. Okay, guys, so we're nearly done. So now we've got the left and the right, and we've got the up and the down. So now we can do Pythagoras. So if we're going a little bit to the left and a little bit down, then your triangle would probably look something like that. So the left would be 51.24. And the down is 35.53. And so we could use Pythagoras to find this length over here. And I'm going to call that FR because that's the result. And that's going to be 51.24 squared plus 35.53 squared. That's just basic Pythagoras. And so that's going to give us 62.35 newtons. Okay, so there's our answer, 62.35 which is very similar to what we got when we did the construction method. Now we also need to find the angle. Now there's different ways to find the angles depending on how you draw your triangle. Because you see how I drew to the left and then I drew down, but you might have drawn down first and then to the left. So then look at the angle you're working out. You're working out that angle, whereas I'm working out that angle. Okay, so you might get a different answer to me depending on your angle chosen. At the end, I'll, expl I'll give both kinds of answers that you could have gotten. So I'm going to use this angle. And this is where you use reverse trigonometry. So we have the opposite and we have the adjacent. So that's going to be tan. And so we're going to say tan of theta is equal to opposite over the adjacent. Now, because you're looking for the angle, you're going to say shift tan on your calculator. And so you're going to say shift tan of 35.53 over 51.24. And that's going to give you 34.74 degrees. Okay, so the answer is going to be 62.35 newtons at an angle of 34. 0.74 degrees. Now I need to explain to the teacher how I got this. So I went downwards from the west line. Can you see um, this line here is called a west line because it's going to the left and we went below that. So we're going south of the west line. So we say south of west. If you did your triangle in a different way and you want to know if you are correct, your answer would be 62.35 and your angle would be 55.26, but your, you would say west of south. So if you got any one of those two, you are correct.